This is problem 1432, it's on page 756. The air in a room has a dry bulb temperature of 26 degrees Celsius and a wet bulb temperature of 21 degrees Celsius. Assuming a pressure of 100 kilopascals, determine A, the specific hu humidity, B, the relative humidity, and C, the dew point temperature. Okay, so let's write down what was given. The temperature is 26 degrees Celsius. What temperature would that be? Dry bulb. Dry bulb, that's right, because they gave us the wet bulb was 21 degrees Celsius. The dry bulb is just the normal temperature we're used to dealing with. Pressure is 100 kilopascals, and they basically just want a bunch of state data. They want the specific humidity, so that's the absolute humidity. They want the relative humidity, and they want the dew point temperature. In other words, at what temperature will the water in the air start condensing out? Now, this is not going to be an ideal problem for the video because we're going to use a psychrometric chart. But I chose this problem intentionally so that we could. Notice the temperature of 100 kilopascals is not exactly 101.325, but it's pretty darn close. So we'll just use the psychrometric chart and neglect the, the error. We will have as much error uh, reading off the chart as we would in uh, uh, the difference between the pressures. Anyway, so go to page 953. I'll try to hold it up for the sake of the camera. And if you're looking at this as an example problem, then you'll want to turn to that page in your book and follow along with this. So we're using this chart, page 953, and what we're going to do is locate the information that's been given. So we've been given a dry bulb temperature of 26 degrees. What does that do? Well, that locates us on the x-axis. If you notice, you got uh, 10, 20, 30. Each small tick mark is one degree. So in the center, between 25 and 30 is a sort of an extended tick mark. So if we go one more, that's 26 degrees. Okay, and that's our dry bulb temperature. That indicates a vertical line on this graph. Okay. Now one thing I recommend you do is get yourself a piece of paper or a ruler or something and lay it along that line, okay? And that'll make your life a little easier. I really like the corner of a piece of paper. That helps a lot because then you can go horizontally as well as vertically. Anyway, so 26 degree dry bulb temperature and then the wet bulb temperature, 21 degrees. Well, where are the lines of constant wet bulb temperature? Well, those are those dotted lines that run almost parallel to the, the um, dark lines that are for enthalpy. Okay. So we're looking for a dry bulb temperature on the x-axis of 26 degrees. I've got to go to the table to, to do this now. I can't hold it up for the video. Dry bulb temperature of 26 degrees. I'm using my, the corner of a piece of paper to find this. And then I want to intersect that with a wet bulb temperature of, let's see, 21 degrees. Now I notice that there is a dotted line for 20 degrees. Uh, wet bulb temperature. The next one's probably 21, let's see, 22, 23, 24, yeah, then 25 is marked. So each line, each dotted line up is one more degree. So what I need to do is intersect 26 dry bulb with 21 wet bulb, and then I can read off anything I want. In fact, notice that the intersection's right above, it's right at the number 60%. Do you see that? The 60% number actually kind of covers it up. It's at the intersection of a pretty nice point there. So if we were to read off, so let me get my piece of paper back up there. If we were to read off the absolute humidity, where would we get that? That would be on the y-axis all the way on the right. Okay. So all we have to do is go over on the right, and what's, what number do you get for the absolute humidity? reading the wrong thing. The 85, 84, that's the enthalpy. The humidity is set in just a little bit. Okay, 13. Okay, so for the sake of the camera, it's not these numbers over here. They're set in and they're on top of the graph a little bit. Okay. You said 13? 13, almost 14. I got 13 and a half. I was right on the line, that dark line. And uh, I think that's right. Now, one thing I noted, I was working with some example problems earlier, or homework problems earlier today. 
I think my, my piece of paper is square, but I don't think this chart is square. I think when they printed it, it's at an angle. I don't know if yours is the same way or not. But uh, anyway, it makes it a little more difficult to read things off. So I've got to find the intersection and turn my page a little bit to uh, just pivot around the point that I find. So it looks to me like about 13 and a half. Do you guys notice that each horizontal line division on the absolute humidity is a half so it's a uh, half of a gram per kilogram of dry air. So if we were to write this down, if it's 13 and a half off the chart, but I don't want to write it down as 13 and a half grams per kilogram, then I need to move the decimal place three to the left. Okay. Bless you. So that would be 0 0.0135 kilograms of water vapor per kilogram dry air. Does that make sense? Okay. So what's given in the chart is grams per kilogram. I like kilograms per kilogram because it's just easy, at least for me. How do we get the uh, relative humidity? Just read it off. Notice that the lines of constant relative humidity are lines that run this way. Okay, They're kind of curved and they run down the page. Okay, so they have a positive slope, I guess you'd say. Now, the line I was above, my, the intersection point, uh, the number 60% was right on top of it, but really the point is above the 60% line a little bit. In fact, what number do you think would be appropriate for the relative humidity? It's more than 60%. What do you think? I don't think 65, that'd be halfway in between the two lines. 62.23. <laughs> I was going to say 62%. 63% would be fine. You guys see what I'm reading off, right? Okay. How about the dew point temperature? In other words, at what temperature will the air start to, or will the water start to fall out of the air? In other words, at what point will saturation be reached? This one's a little more difficult to, to see and understand. It's not too bad, though. If you're using your piece of paper, all you really have to do, hold it up where the camera can see it, all you really have to do once you find what horizontal line you're on is just go all the way over to the, uh, uh, the curved line, the saturation line, and you can read off the dew point temperature there. So let me do that next. All right, so all you really need is the humidity of 13.5% and then go off and read off the dew point temperature. Okay, so the dew point temperature is going to be read from the saturation temperature line. Does that make sense to everybody? Now our saturation temperature, let's see, we got 15 there. Uh, let's see, 17, 18, 19, 20. No, that's not, it must be half. 18 and a half. 18, 16, 17, 18. No, I'm doing something wrong. I know what I'm doing wrong. You have to actually go down, yeah, you have to go down to the x-axis to read it off. So, let's see, 15, 16, 17, 18, yeah, 18 and a half, makes sense. So, what we did there, for the sake of those watching the video, uh, what we did is we found the uh, relative, or excuse me, the absolute humidity, okay, on the y-axis, intersected the, let me move it over a bit, found the absolute humidity on the y-axis, intersected the saturation line, and then went down to the x-axis to read off the temperature. Okay, and that's how we found the dew point temperature of 18 and a half degrees. See how nice the psychrometric chart is? We didn't have to use any equations to do this. Could we have done this with equations? Yes, we sure could have. So let's do it. You knew I was going to say that, didn't you? No, we couldn't have done it. Please, no. Let's do it next because I want you to see that both of these give you the same results. But I want you to appreciate the psychrometric chart and go to it whenever you can to use it. So with the information that we've been given, let's see if we can figure this out. What does a wet bulb temperature mean? Well, that's the temperature where, and we may not be able, this may be difficult. 
We may have to skip it. Well, let me just talk through this. The wet bulb temperature is the temperature where the water vapor will be saturated. Does that make sense? In other words, the water vapor will start coming out and going into the liquid phase. So if we looked up a temperature on the saturation tables, we could look up the pressure of saturation as the pressure uh, at a temperature of 21 degrees Celsius. We won't do this mainly because you'll have to go and interpolate. I know you don't feel like interpolating. You're getting close to Thanksgiving break, so I'm going to go easy on you guys tonight. Okay? But what you would do is you would interpolate, get the, the partial pressure at saturation, okay? and uh, then you could calculate this, because, uh, let's see, how would you do that? You've got uh, 0 0.622, 0 0.622, like this. Um, I'm trying to think of exactly how you do it. So you would have this. Uh, I know what you would do. But then you could... Uh, You could also look up P sub G here at 26 degrees Celsius. Okay. I'm trying to think, how would you? Yeah, yeah, that would work. And so the partial pressure of the water vapor, then how can I explain this? The, the relative humidity would end up being the partial pressure of the water vapor divided by the pressure of saturation. This is going to be your saturation condition, and this is going to be the actual right now. See, because what will happen is this partial pressure of the water vapor is not going to change. As the temperature goes down, that, that basically is proportional to the amount of mass. And the mass in the air is not changing. The mass of water vapor is not changing. And so that would go in here and allow you to calculate the relative humidity. Once you have that, then you can do this and calculate the absolute humidity. So which PG is this, do you know? Which, which pressure of saturated vapor goes in here? Well, remember, we're interested in the humidity right now, right? So this would either be this, or if you took the whole thing, you'd plug in this one. A lot of lines. It looks like a football. <laughs> no wonder football players are confused. What? Which way you want me to go? Run at the big guy? Okay. <laughs> So essentially what I'm trying to say here is that you, you got, uh, did I say that right? I think I still messed it up. Never mind. I messed it up. We'll just stop the video now. You could do it. I should make it, we should do it now, but it's close to Thanksgiving, so we won't.